and welcome back to my channel. Today I am actually going to be starting a new series for you and that is due to a haul that I have done. If you have not seen that haul, I will leave it linked down below. And that is talking about a bunch of the Shop Hush products I got. Now, I feel like this site is known for carrying and creating dupes of a lot of high-end products. And today we are going to be putting one of those to the test. If you enjoyed this kind of video and would like to see more, please do not forget to like, also subscribe, and tap that notification bell to be notified of more videos. And let's just get into this. Now, quick disclaimer, if you hear banging, it is because my in-laws are installing a floor upstairs, but I was feeling nice today and I wanted to film anyway, so just ignore that. Today we are going to be talking about the Royals palette by Bad Habit. Really pretty, nice and slim. It has a mirror right there. We open it up and hmm, he looks familiar. I wonder if I have a palette that looks just about like this. Oh yeah, I do. It's called the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance. Looking at these two palettes, you can very obviously see a crap ton of similarities, although the colors are out of order. The likenesses between them are definitely not a mistake. But let's get into some cold hard facts about these palettes. The Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance is $42. It is a permanent palette in their range. You get 14 shades ranging from mattes and shimmers to some very almost metallic shades. Each pan is 0 0.7 grams of product and as you guys know I do absolutely love this palette. It is one of my ultimate favorites, holy grails. I love the red tones. There is not a shade in this palette that I do not absolutely love. Now, this is the Royals palette by Bad Habit that can be found on the Shop Hush website. I will leave that linked down below. This is a certified cruelty-free product, which makes me so happy. I'm just, it's inexpensive. This is $10 and it's cruelty-free. Just cheers all round. This palette, however, does not have the how much each individual shadow is on the back. It says net weight is 22.4 grams slash 0 0.79 ounces. So I tried doing the math. I'm not very good at math. I'm not sure how that compares to the Anastasia Beverly Hills palette. Looking at them, the pans are definitely bigger in the Bad Habit palette, but I'm not sure how deep they are. Now, before I decided to do these videos, I was doing a lot of research, looking into these palettes, looking into the palettes I'm comparing them to, and as I was, you know, going about doing my sleuthing and everything, I noticed something very peculiar about these products. Now, oftentimes when we purchase high-end, we are paying for the formula and the superior quality and ingredients. The ingredients are the same on these. And I'm like, hmm, okay, all right, all right. So, all right, so we're paying for the superior quality, the superior blendability and the pigmentation. I will tell you right now that the look I have on my eyes was done creating all from this palette. These shades were pigmented, they were blendable, they didn't have a huge amount of kick up. It was a really enjoyable experience using this palette. So when I'm thinking about the ingredients and everything like that, I'm like, okay, it's like, you know, the difference between, say, a master baker baking a cake and someone else baking a cake. You know, you have the same ingredients, but it, it comes out superior on the one side. I'm not sure. But enough of that. I know what you guys are excited to see. We're going to swatch these bad boys against each other. 
You're ready for it? Because swatches tell all. Okay, so the colors are a little scattered in this one. So we are going to take the modern renaissance and go boop, 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 and grab the correlating shade from the Royals palette. We are gonna start off with raw sienna here. Absolutely beautiful, buttery, all that jazz. You know how I feel about Anastasia Beverly Hills shadows. And then the correlating shade from the Royals palette, I think would be, hmm, uh, Noble right here. These are soft as well, definitely not as soft as Anastasia's shades, but they still are very beautiful. There it is right there, a little bit lighter on the Royals palette, but still very comparable. Then we're going to go into tempura right here. Tempera. Tempura is an Asian food. This shade is just going to disappear into my skin. You can kind of see it right there. And for that, we're going to go into this treasury shade right here. This one is very soft as well. A slight discoloration, but once again, like these first two, very comparable. Next is burnt orange. We all know Anastasia Beverly Hills shades are just super pigmented, very creamy. We love them. Then I believe that one is supposed to be air right here. Gonna get that going on right there. A consistent theme I'm noticing in these palettes is that the uh, Bad Habit one, the shade is just a, a couple tones off of the modern renaissance but it is more like a you know sibling of the first one next i'm doing golden ochre which is a beautiful shade right there and from the royals palette it is opulent right here i did use this shade today as my first just all over the lid and I found it was very good I don't think the swatch is doing it any kind of justice because I really like the way it looked on my eye then we have the two shimmer shades right here primavera which is mm, absolutely stunning and then we're going to kill two birds with one stone and we're going to do Vermeer as well, just leaving enough space to swatch under the Primavera shade. I'm sorry, these swatches are pretty shoddy. From the Royals palette, we are going to do Crown, putting it under, oh my goodness, Primavera. And then we're going to do Queen, which would be... These ones are a bit powdery from the Royals palette, and Queen is going under Vermeer. Once again, it's like the same feel, but the tones are just a little bit off. We're also running out of space to swatch. Okay, then we're getting into some of my favorite shades. We have got Red Ochre here, which just gives me life. I'm actually going to do that one up top right here. There we have that. And then I believe from this palette, the one that is supposed to be that is this rain shade right here. I can tell right now that it is going to be a bit more muted than red ochre, which seems to be the theme. And I'm really surprised at how terribly these are swatching because using this palette today it performed absolutely phenomenally on my eyes then buon fresco right here which is beautiful purpley shade gonna do that right there and i keep swatching way too far away i'm like bring it over here or maybe it's just the way my arm is tilted and that's gonna be the shade primrose from this palette Once again, basically a muted version of the one from the Anastasia Beverly Hills palette. Then we have Antique Bronze, and I'm actually going to start swatching on this arm because I am running out of space. There is Antique Bronze, absolutely stunning. And I'm not sure if this palette has really a comparable... Oh, no, I guess they do. Yeah, maybe. I think this 
honor shade right here is what they're going to try to pull off as antique bronze. We will definitely see. Okay, out of all of them, that one definitely seems the most comparable in color and pigmentation payoff. Then we have Warm Taupe right here. I keep putting it on the wrong side. Their Warm Taupe is right there, and I believe that is going to be this Throne shade. <laughs> kind of a gamble, but hopefully we get it right. This one is also a touch more comparable in pigmentation and color match, but once again, just a teensy weensy bit off. Then Love Letter right here, which is mm, one of my absolute favorites. It is just so <laughs> stunning. And then Love Letter, I believe, is going to be... Did we skip Venetian Red? We totally skipped Venetian Red. But Love Letter is going to be this majestic shade right here. We will get back to a Venetian Red. This one is pretty comparable. As you can see, it is just a little bit lighter. Oh my goodness. Now we are going to do Venetian Red because I was an idiot and skipped that color. Another one of my absolute favorites. This is such a good red. And from this palette is going to be the Regal shade right here. These all feel very smooth and beautiful. Like if I were just like picking up this palette, say they had it at Ulta for $40, I would not know it was originally a $10 palette. There is Regal from this palette right there. Still really pretty, but not the same payoff on the swipe. Then we have, oh my goodness, I'm running out of clean fingers, Warm Taupe right here. Come on. There it is, really close to that one right there. And then I believe that is supposed to be, oh my goodness, what have we not done? I believe it's this shade thrown right here. Judy Swatchy, it's so awkward. That one was probably the angle and everything, but not so good. Then we are getting into one of my favorite shades, Cypress Umber, right here. Oh my goodness, my hands are going to be covered in shadow after the. Oh, I always forget how pigmented this shade is, and I'm actually going to do this. Oh my goodness. It's so freaking pigment. Obviously, it's going to be this color grand right here. Let's see how they compare. Not so good. That's just a little of color right there. Then last but not least, we have Real Gar, which is this beautiful orange. And I'm actually going to swatch that right here for you all. Y'all can see that amazing. And it's going to be this Monarch shade right here from the Royals palette. I can tell you right now, this one is not going to compare right there. So here we have the swatches. Obviously, as you can tell, there is a fair amount of discrepancy between the color matches and the pigmentation between the Modern Renaissance and the Royals palette. So just from finger swatching and seeing the pigmentation and the color match of this palette would initially tell me that it's not very good. However, having used this palette on my eyes multiple times and having used some of the shades that do not perform well in the swatches, I'm inclined to believe that this palette is absolutely amazing. I mean, if I were to go on camera and tell you guys that this look was created by the modern renaissance, I'm fairly inclined to believe that you would believe me. Is it a complete spot on dupe? No, it is not. There are definitely tones of color discrepancies, although 
I cannot knock the pigmentation even though with the finger swatches because I have used this palette and when applying it with a brush to your eyes, the pigmentation is beautiful, smooth, and these shades blend out absolutely beautifully. So all in all, I really would recommend this palette. It is cruelty free. It's only $10 and I absolutely love the look I was able to achieve with this. No, it is not a spot on dupe, but if you are drawn to these colors and you want to try it out before you buy this one, definitely check this out. If you want to have sort of a modern renaissance that you can take with you traveling that only cost you ten dollars so if it breaks it's not as heartbreaking as if this one breaks i am absolutely 100 percent pleasantly surprised by this palette and i absolutely love it so my recommendation is definitely to check out this palette i will leave that link down below for you guys thank you guys so much for joining me today for this review please let me know what you think about it down below Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you. And as always, keep it real. Mwah.